This is the Star News Brief. I'm Susan Kiprano. The control of budget has warned of a possible debt crisis if the National Treasury continues to borrow to meet budget deficits. Margaret Nyakango argues that increased public borrowing may result in undesirable fiscal consequences. Public debt sustainability indicators already illustrate that Kenya faces a high risk of debt distress. President Uhuru Kenyatta's administration only has room to borrow 590 billion shillings to hit the 9 trillion shillings public debt ceiling MPs set in October 2019. Next year's budget deficit is projected to be at about 1 trillion shillings. COB warns that the debts may attract high interest rates, increase inflation and overburden future generations. Get a copy of The Star by subscribing to our e-paper for only 10 shillings by dialing star 550 star 3 hash. Although cases of human trafficking in Kenya are rising, there is a significant decrease in convictions to reports by the United Nations and the U.S. Department of State suggest. The victims trafficked in Kenya are mainly subjected to forced labor and sexual exploitation, the report says. Perpetrators risk 30 years to life imprisonment or a fine of not less than 30 million shillings. However, only three people were convicted for human trafficking in 2019, compared to seven in 2018, says a 2020 Trafficking in Persons report, Kenya, by the U.S. Department of State. The report notes in 2019, the Kenyan government reported identifying 853 trafficking victims, up from 400 in 2018. ODM leader Raila Odinga on Monday said that he supports President Uhuru Kenyatta's sentiments that the country's presidency should be rotational. Raila called on a much representative government citing the 2013 Jubilee administration, which he said didn't reflect the face of the nation. At the same time, Uhuru's sentiments that other tribes can hold the presidency appeared to give a lifeline to opposition politicians such as Musalia Mudavadi and Kalonzo Musyoka. It also raises the question of whether Deputy President William Ruto can get the Mount Kenya vote with without Uhuru's backing. Embattled Senate Majority Whip Irungu Kangata has stuck to his guns that BBI is unpopular in Mount Kenya and insinuated that he was ready to pay the price for his strong views on the drive. Addressing journalists at Parliament buildings on Monday, Kangata said BBI is facing systematic political problems in Mount Kenya that need to be addressed to save the government from embarrassment. Late last month, Kangata penned a radical letter to Uhuru saying that only two in every ten people in the president's backyard support the BBI. He urged the president to personally take charge of popularizing the document in the region, lest he is left with egg on his face. But last Saturday, Uhuru appeared to dismiss the letter claiming he was fully in charge of the road the government was taking. And finally, the Nairobi County Assembly plans to proceed to vet Deputy Governor nominee Anne Mwenda Kananu as expected on Friday. Successful vetting means she could become governor replacing Mike Sonko and avoiding a divisive by-election. But now Sonko wants a democratic by-election and so does DP William Ruto. So the people can vote for the next governor. On Sunday, Ruto broke his silence on Nairobi politics and warned the County Assembly against vetting Kananu on Friday. He said that would forestall a democratic by-election to fill the governor's slot as provided by law. The DP claimed people were planning to install the governor using the court. However, Majority Leader Abdi Guya Hassan told the Star on Monday that despite Ruto's remarks, the Assembly will proceed with the vetting process. Get a copy of the Star by subscribing to our e-paper for only 10 shillings by dialing star 550 star 3 hash. You can also get more on the Star website.